All right, joining us right now is Anish Damania, Head of Institutional Equities at IDFC Securities. Anish, morning. Thanks for taking the time out today. Let, let's, let's get your perspective in terms of the market strategy out here, Anish, because the last couple of days, markets have got a little bit nervous, but with the mega event lined up in terms of the elections itself, what are your thoughts here? So, uh, if, if one were to see two months back, uh, we had a huge overweight position, let's say, in the IT and the pharma and the exporters uh, and the consumers. These were the three sectors where most of the investors were aligned to and they had a huge uh, negative position or, or underweight position in uh, banking uh, and capital goods and some of the domestic cyclicals. So, uh, what's happened is that uh, between, between that time and now, uh, there is reasonable uh, expectation that uh, we'll form a stable government and if you see the last two election results the markets had uh, shot up uh, quite substantially after the election results and as a result uh, most people uh, sort of said that let's first benchmark our portfolios to the market so which meant that uh, they cut their overweight positions in uh, IT pharma and uh, consumers uh, the, probably a lot of investors have even gone underweight consumers now and they have increased their positions to either market neutral or slightly overweight on banks and capital goods and domestic cyclicals. So as we go into the election results, uh, uh, investors' portfolios are balanced. Second thing is that on the domestic side, we continue to see redemption. So, uh, so while they balance their portfolio, uh, they sold a lot more in uh, uh, these overweight sectors. And in case of uh, uh, the FIIs, as uh, the EM flows reversed, uh, we started to get more money into uh, into India, and uh, they bought a lot more of uh, the domestic cyclicals and uh, capital goods and banks. Uh, at the same time, they paired their positions in IT pharma. So what we are seeing is that uh, as we go into the election, uh, election results, uh, uh, we are seeing a more balanced portfolio. So either way, market movement is not going to hurt the portfolio that much. And that's exactly the position which most investors have taken. Let's also take a look at uh, uh, you know, some of the sectors you mentioned one by one. Uh, we've got earnings when it comes to the banking pack starting to filter through. And they've been pretty much either in line or disappointing to some extent because asset quality concerns persist. Uh, that's one pack which has been riding the development theme as well. Uh, within that pack, would you define or, or you know, differentiate between the public sector and private sector banks or the heavyweights and the mid caps? How would you go about picking uh, you know, from that particular segment of the market? So if you look at uh, uh, both these sides, you know, uh, there, are, uh, there are certain red flags uh, which, have, uh, which are continuing in, uh, in the banking space. But uh, to the extent that uh, you know, some of uh, the results, which because the stock prices have moved up, the expectations have, uh, have sort of sobered down and they said that they will be, this is a peak of the NPL cycle. In some cases, uh, it is not, like Axis has said that uh, NPAs uh, will be a little uh, worse in FI15 than FI14, whereas ICICI Bank says that uh, FI14 was uh, the worst NPA which they have faced. So, uh, so there will be some uh, divergent views on that. Uh, I think uh, economy is not yet out of the woods. The corporates continue to continue to have high debt, and we are in a low demand scenario. So, uh, so uh, to say that NPL cycle is peaked is probably correct, but how long will this peak continue is something which uh, one has to look at. And uh, one of the things which uh, I would say is that at least for the next two to three quarters, it, it doesn't look like it will ebb uh, quite significantly. Uh, the PSUs have gone up about 35%, the PSU banks in the last two months uh, versus a bank nifty going up by about 25 odd percent. So PSUs have corrected, actually what, what has happened is that uh, while they have outperformed uh, the market and outperformed the bank index, what, uh, what they have done is they have corrected their valuation, the undervaluation uh, to a great extent on expectation that uh, we'll have a stable government as we go forward and slowly things will fall in place. So that's one of the reasons why uh, the PSUs have uh, outperformed. But from this level onwards, uh, it looks uh, very, very sketchy to take a buy bet on uh, PSU banks. We think the structural issues still remain. And you'll continue to see uh, issues with respect to PSU banks' balance sheets and asset quality as we go forward.
You know, the other interesting theme, uh, Anisha, we're focusing this morning, and I don't know if you've had a look at the way auto sales numbers have actually panned out, because once again, there seems to be this little bit of a disappointment coming in with the way the monthly sales numbers have been playing out. But on, on the broader sense out here, Anisha, what's the call when we talk about the auto segment? So uh, in the auto segment, what we have seen clearly is uh, uh, four-wheelers have reported poor numbers than what expectations were, whereas the two-wheelers, only one number has come about, uh, which is Hero Honda, they are, the sales are up 14%. And I, I'm not so surprised because uh, there is such a lot of huge spending in the election, uh, mm, uh, you know, during this run-up to the elections that uh, two-wheeler sales uh, probably were impacted a little better uh, in that sense. Uh, but demand environment continues to be uh, muted across the board. So uh, we'll see these blips uh, for one or two months, and then we'll see uh, slower demand as we go forward. So uh, so the four-wheeler auto sales are probably reflecting uh, what the state of the economy is at this point of time. Mm. Yeah, the, the other bit out here, Anish, that's been uh, somewhat surprising, that's what, uh, what's got focus once again, has been the mid-caps. And, you know, we were just discussing about this earlier as well. In terms of the way some of these mid-cap stocks have actually run up, I want to get a broader view from you out here, Anish, in terms of what's really happening in the mid-cap space. And is there a certain belief that with the, with the election just a couple of weeks away, there could be a case where some of these stocks would actually see a massive profit taking, considering the recent rally a couple of them have seen? So uh, we need to understand that uh, uh, four, till four months ago, the mid-cap index had underperformed uh, the large-cap index very massively. And there were stocks which were trading at uh, very poor valuations, uh, even though uh, growth was OK with them. And there were some stocks in the infra and the capital goods space which had uh, uh, fallen off quite a lot, much below their book value. So what we have seen uh, actually is uh, largely a correction of that uh, of that fact and to some extent as w one expects that there's a stable government building up uh, people are taking more positions uh, in the mid cap and as you are aware mid caps are uh, not very largely traded so the impact cost is very high on either side so if there's a disappointment on the election results uh, uh, as I mentioned to you, less than 230 seats or less than 240 seats for the NDA, then uh, you are going to see uh, a sharper correction in the mid caps than the large caps. Anish, the other big question that we've been asking is, um, you know, really, are the markets overheated? It's, it's a big debate at the moment because there is a school of thought that says they're pretty fairly valued, um, you know, given that uh, fundamentals still even need to catch up further. But on the other hand, given the way markets have run up with some of these stocks trading at all kinds of new records, what's your opinion? So uh, what, what one looks at is that uh, how the market uh, valuations are. So uh, market valuations today are at about 15, 15 and a half times forward earnings, which is tracking its uh, long-term average. But at the same time, the interest rates uh, are, are on the higher side. So if I were to take in relation to the interest rate cycle and uh, the valuation cycle, then uh, there is a bit of overpricing of the market. Uh, second thing uh, which I w wanted to highlight is that the earnings growth is still a little bit of a far cry to understand that uh, we'll have a, a reasonably good earnings growth going forward is something which has not yet happened. Uh, we have started this season on a uh, on a weak note in the in that sense. So, uh, so wh where I come from is that there is some overheating with respect to the expectations for the market. But if you really ask me, derivatives is one side where uh, you should look at whether there is real overheating, and there the outstanding positions are still not showing you that they are still at the lower end of uh, the overall outstanding positions which we have seen over the last several years. Uh, however, one thing among the outstanding positions is that most of the outstanding position is long and the short is by the arbitrages. So, uh, so typically even if uh, there is uh, a disappointment on the election results, we are going to see some sort of a sell-off here.